the practice of Lalanga to reflect, to think about ancestors, to think about ways of the past. We also utilise Lalanga to talk about things in the present and we also use Lalanga to talk about things into the future. And we use Lalanga as a way to transfer knowledge and to, to reflect and talk about things that are relevant to us as, as people. My name is Felicia Brown Acton. I am happy to be here today to um, teach you about Lalanga Niue or the concept of Niue and weaving. And what I'm going to be showing you today is how to Lalanga or weave a fisikose, a hibiscus flower. So the main thing that we're going to be utilising, everything that you see here, except for this basket, this is made from the coconut um, tree, but everything else that is here is all made from the pandanus tree. The pandanus tree is um, well known throughout the Pacific, it is the main tree that they utilise to, to cultivate the raw leaves uh, and to turn them or take them through a process uh, to get it to a stage where it's, it's, it's manageable for weaving. So my grandmother um, was a, a Tufunga Lalanga. She is a master weaver. She's renowned in Niue for her weaving. The practice in itself for me has always been extended through seeing, seeing my grandmother weave, seeing my mother weave. And not only do we utilize weaving as a practice um, um, to sort of produce um, fine you know, crafts um, or just creating something for a celebration or for an event, it's another way to kind of adorn myself and connect it to my uh, uni unique Tangata Niue identity or my Pacifica you know, identity. Um, so I think it's for anybody and everybody. Um, mothers, fathers, men, women, grandmothers, grandfathers, everybody should. Um, you know, it's, and it's one of those beautiful Pacific thing. Everybody likes to have um, something that's representative of of, of their whenua, of their land. Often it's a way to celebrate and to feel good and to feel adorned. And I make these in, re in replication of not having access to the beautiful floral and fauna that we have in the Pacific. If you like a hibiscus flower and you love to be adorned in a hibiscus flower, wear a hibiscus flower. If you love to be adorned in leaves and uh, frangipani flowers or um, any type of flower, you know, find your flower and flaunt it. It's, it's easy to go to a $2 shop and buy these beautiful $2 shop plastic glaze, but it's also another meaningful thing to learn the concept of Lalanga and put it into adornment um, and gifting it to somebody. When you weave things, if you're not centered, if your things are not prepared properly, it'll show in your weaving. So it's really important to not just prepare fibers and your working space, but also to center and prepare yourself. Um, so that everything you put into your weaving ends up being beautiful like all of these taonga pieces. So the pandanus, this is what we call a pakafa, and this is the process that when you take the pandanus leaf, you boil it, you put it in the sun to dry, and then you end up with this part of the leaf. You need to be able to stretch the fibres out so that they become really pliable so that when you are weaving, they fold over each other and they're quite supple. So I'm going to take you through the process of what we call in new wear, ha'au. And ha'au is the process of using something um, like a knife and we utilise this to sort of take it through the process of stretching. And then from that stage, what we then want to do is we want to turn this piece of pandanus into more unison strips of pieces, or very similar to this. This is the process that we want to strip the pandanus down. Um, and this is what I utilize to sort of pierce the lofa and to sort of take it through its stripping stage. This is the part that we want to turn our um, pandanus into uniform links. We are going to make 12 inch strips 
and we're going to cut these down. So I've measured 12 inches and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to fold it over. Now I've got three um, 12 inch strips. What we're going to, to move on into is to weaving one petal. So you've got two strips, you want to turn it into an X, you want to take the top part and you want to turn it under the line, you want to form a line and a V. And then take the left side of the line and you want to turn it over the top part of the left side of the V. And then you want to take the right part of the line and you want to turn that under the other side of the V and then you want to flip that part up and over the first part of the line that you just did and that's what it should look like. So what we've just formed there is this very top part which is this of the petal. And then we want to take two more um, strips. You're going to insert that between the two right parts of the V, just like that. Taking the next strip, rather than going between the two right strips of the V, we're going to go under, and then we're going to come up through the two, and we're going to place it right next to the other side. So we're going to take these two, and from the right side of the V and we're going to twist this one under and then we're going to take this one here and we're going to flip that and we're going to fold it under and bring that under there. And then this, this new strip that you've added to the right of the V, you're going to now flip that under itself and kind of make a nice little point like that and fold it under. Now we're going to go to the left side, we're going to add another two strips and we're going to form the left side of the point. Most people would flip backwards, hold forward, flip backwards. I just find it easier as a beginner weaver to kind of navigate it over and under this way. So I've inserted another strip going diagonally to the left of the V through all of those six. And then I will go under again and continue this under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And we will follow that same process that we did for the right side of the V on the left side. Um, and then we now take this part, fold it over that strip, and we want to incorporate that folded strip back through as such. So we are incorporating six um, strips into that and that's basically what you're going to do. Now you've got all of these edges here to the left and to the right and what we want to do is follow the basic concept of weaving and then we want to continue weaving it over and under, over and under until this last point. This is the centre here. That's pretty much what your petal is going to look like and you don't want to continue going down too, too much longer because if you go down too much longer, you'll end up with a more of a squarish shaped um, petal. Um, and you want to be making five of these for the hibiscus flower. So moving on to the stamen part of the, um, of the hibiscus, which is the center part of the flower. So again, this is the same concept of doing the X and turning it into a V. And again, the same thing, turning it under itself, turning it over itself, and forming again that kind of point there where you've formed this nice little stamen. What you will be using to put um, your petals together is you will be using um, dental floss string, which is what I use. So I'm going to take one needle, that's all you need. So you just want to thread it through, and this is the first part. Pinch it, hold it, bring everything together. Take your needle, so you can pass your needle through the bottom part. And again, just take it around. Yes, 
you then want to incorporate the stamen that we made. Now, the stamen's going to be at the center of the flower and it's important to put it in now because as you start to go around and incorporate your other flowers, you don't want this to kind of sit off or away in between another two flowers because it won't look like the center. Thread it through the stamen and fastening it to the petal. So I'll show you the next part, which is to add a petal, so that's to, to this petal. Getting your needle, and again, doing the same thing, connecting the stamen and the first petal to the next petal that you're going to put in. What I'm going to do now is assemble all of the petals, and we'll come back to you at the end of assembling them into a fisikose and its final look. From village to village in Niue, like there are different techniques um, of weaving. Um, for instance, um, there is a style in, in one village in Avaseli where they weave a lot of these strips, um, these bands, um, and what they'll do is they'll weave them and keep weaving them and weaving them, and then eventually what they'll do is they'll turn them into a hat. So they'll start from the center and utilize this and just go round and round and round and round until a hat's made completely just in this technique. And then there are those that do the sia lily technique, which is this technique of bowling, of making hats, of making rounds, discs. And then there are the really fine, fine weavers who make um, katopola similar to this out of lo nu or the coconut leaf. Um, and some don't make them as fine and split the leaves or join the leaves to make really refined baskets um, like this. They'll make them in thicker strips. But again, from village to village, every technique differs. People use different styles, different techniques. But one thing that um, is apparent in Niue between the north and the south is that, um, you know, everybody's guarding of their weaving techniques and their secrets because um, I guess these are things that are held um, um, in trust from weaver to weaver. If you're blessed to have knowledge as a weaver, um, it's no good sitting with you and dying with you. It's important to pass on that knowledge and that information to as many people as possible so that it keeps the art of Lalanga alive, uh, that it continues into future generations. <laughs> And there you have it. This is how you make a fisikause or a hibiscus um, uh, flower. I encourage you to give it a go. You don't have to use low fire or natural fibers to, um, to lalanga or weave. I just encourage you to have fun with it. And I wish you the best uh, on your journey with um, lalanga or weaving. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.